say this unless it's one from sunny, not so sunny day. It's raining, Terry. It is again. It's, it's, it's again. a horrible day. It's a horrible but day. But it's nicer in here. It is. And um, nice to see you uh, drumming again. I've never stopped drumming. Well, it seemed like to the great outside that you had sort of put well, you on the back burner. For, for those great outside people, this is the great inside and this is my drum inside. Very nice. I do play. Reading the paper that Rod Stewart's actually finally, now he's made a new album of, of new songs, which I've not heard, but apparently... Yes, uh, I mean, one. I've heard the album all the way through. I've heard a couple of things on it. Mm. And then I heard he went to number one. Mm. So I sent him an email, called him up, and he kept a lovely banter coming back, yeah. Yeah. It's about time as well. But, uh, yeah, but, but he's now no, saying, I'm really pleased for him. It's really nice. Yeah, it? he's good. Mm. And he's now... In every interview I see, he touches on the faces, and um, mm. are you saying he's looking at doing it again? I mean, yeah. what, what, what's, the, what's the low down there, I can't you say? Or is it my people talking to his people? Uh, I don't know if I want to do it now. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's like cry wolf, isn't it, really? Yeah, um, yeah no, I, no we, I think we all want to do a faces tour just to get it off our chest, and, and just because we, we kind of parted in the wrong way and I think it, it just put that wrong to right in a sense. Because mm. so, you have got together over the years. Yeah, we periodically we've done, yeah. we, we got together to do the uh, Brit Awards. Yeah, I was there. Uh, yeah, I know, I can't, some other award, some other award and we yeah. played live and stuff like mm. that. It's been so quite it'd be nice good. to do an art graph tour, wouldn't it? Or not an oh, art graph? Yeah, it'd be nice to actually do, you know, a nice tour and it's funny because when we rehearsed, let's see if the old spark was there, we did Memphis, Tennessee, we used to do that in, mm. and we were, I mean, cause we kind of were very honest about it, and I said, "Well, I don't. I never did like playing it like that because of like, boom, boom, boom. And I said, "It's too skippy and too jerky." Mm. And Woody went, "Yeah, I've always thought that." And I went, and "We've all been doing it, the, and we, the, you know, the way that way, and we didn't want to do it that way." Mm. So I said, "Well, let me just do it like a like a, like a jazz beat." You know? mm. So and Rob went, "Oh, that's great." And I said, "Yeah, there you go." So that's. Little changes and little bits and pieces, lots of discussion to actually. So, did you, did you work out a whole set? Oh, no, just one song. Okay. And then he didn't want to do it anyway. And we just keep repeating that. No, uh, okay. No. I think. Um, no, we'll, um, we'll, we'll do, if, you know, if it comes off, you know, mm. we will do a mixture of what we used to do, which is, mm. which is some, of, some faces songs, some other songs we like by different people, and and some Rod songs. Mm. And you got a brand new kit to go out with. No, this is my this is my um, my new bar optic holder. Really? Yeah, I'm going to get a load of optics and bottles on there, so I can. I should have been a drummer. So the question of bass players obviously going to come up, and last time you used a, a mutual friend of ours in Glenn Matlock. Uh, Glenn, yeah, and he and he. Joined us in the Faces reunion, um, the one where Mick Hucknall took Rod's place helping out. Yeah, yeah, I went yeah. to him, did. Yeah, um, and he did a fine job, and yeah. power to him. And, um, he knows some songs by heart, though. He's a yeah, player, he yeah, and so does Mick, funny enough, because, yeah. I mean, Mick Hucknall was, it was a joy to be with. He said he was like a kid in a candy shop, and he was only standing in for Rod. Huh? He introduced me to his family up in the Cotswolds, that one. Oh, right. He's a very nice man. Oh, yeah, he's a very nice man, yeah. yeah. He he's a very, very nice man. <laughs> he's a very nice man. Um, I wanted to be known. Uh, he's, um, no, he, he's a big fan of the faces. And I bumped into him over the years in different receptions and things like that. And he's all, it's like being interviewed. It's a bit like you asking me about the faces all the time. Mm. And it's incredible. He, he, used, he used to come and see us when, we were, when he was like, I don't know, at college and younger than that and stuff, mm. you know. So he really was telling the truth. He was really having a ball, you know. Mm. And, what I loved about it, when he sang the, not only could he sing the Rod songs really well, but uh, he, he, the Ronnie Lane songs, because he's, ballad, he's, he's got a ballady voice, yeah, I suppose, but people know him for that, but he's actually got a rock and roll voice as well, which surprised me. Uh, but he sang the Ronnie Lane songs uh, so well, you know, just unbelievable. It's like having, for me, it was like having Ronnie in the band. So um, we rehearsed um, Tin Soldier and All or Nothing, and I can't remember, really I don't know if we did another one, but anyway, definitely them. And um, when we did those songs at the festival, they went down a bit massive because mm. people still remember the small faces because they're still buying the catalogue. It's still out there, you mm. see. So that was an, a, bit, a bit of an eye opener. And not only that, Mick Uncle sang 
the arse off him. He was fantastic. Mm. And Woody did as well. When we were rehearsing with Woody, mm. you know, for the Faces stuff, right, we got to rehearse the, those two songs, like Tin Soldier and All or Nothing. And Woody went, he got so excited when we finished playing the two songs. He went, I can't believe it. He said, we've just played with two of the originals, you know, the two songs like uh, All or Nothing and Tin Soldier. And Mac and I looked at each other and went, what? Because he was really excited yeah, about yeah. it. You know, we forgot, you know, it's great that we were the two, only two originals, two live ones at the moment, feeling half dead. What do you think brought it to the point where the, the profiles, arguably, the small faces are now bigger than the small faces? I know, it's incredible. I think because I, I, it's all in the music, Terry, I think, because... People found it again. It, yeah, well, I think the small faces and everything we did in those days were, we were ahead of our time hmm. and we didn't quite so realise... Because we, yeah, I mean, people still like it. I mean, what I love about our catalogue keeps getting released and stuff, re-released and redone and bits and pieces. We get, we gain lots of young sort of teenage fans now, mm. every decade. You know, every, t you know, as soon as kids get turned on to small faces, they, they're there, they're big fans for life. It's incredible, you know, because, I mean, we were very creative and we were always in the studio. So we, uh, people sometimes refer to us as a rock and roll band. We were never a rock and roll band. And we never played rock and roll. It was a pop band, wasn't it? No, we weren't even a pop band. I mean, we, yeah, only... Well, a pop stuff. No, we, we made... la all right. That's about it. Yeah, well, you know, that's, that's a pop band, one. Man, no. And, um, no, we were a popular band I at think, the time. I think we'll leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs>